Hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you. In this session today, we will be showing you how you can make a simple DIY anti-corona hand wash using Arduino. Health is wealth, they say. This statement has proven to be quite true considering the prevailing circumstances. Doctors have advised us to stay hygienic and wash our hands for at least 20 seconds to prevent us from getting the COVID, deadly COVID-19. Because by the time when we wash our hands for at least 20 seconds, most of the germs or viruses have been removed from our hands. So in this session today, we will teach you how you can make your own hand wash timer so that you don't forget to wash your hands for less than, any less than 20 seconds. So let's begin by describing what the assembly is. The assembly is basically a smart lab based in N5 since December of 2014 and over the course of about 6 years, we have successfully delivered over 250 free workshops. Now these workshops are categorized into 3 categories, code, hack and data science. Now these workshop, the workshops that are related to coding, software projects, using APIs and gaming projects etc. fall under the category of code. Workshop like today's workshops which focus on hardware, IoT etc. etc. come under the category of hack. Lastly, all AI and machine learning uh, workshops come under the category of data science. Our target audience is students, professionals and entrepreneurs and whoever is interested in our uh, workshops is more than welcome to join. We focus on smart technology and its practical applications. You can know more about us at our forums which is members.theassembly.ae. And don't forget to connect to us with us on our social media. Connect to us on Facebook and YouTube at The Assembly and connect to us on Twitter and Instagram by using our handles at MakesSmartThings. So how does this timer work? So this hand wash timer works by the brain. So what we can say is the brain of the hand wash timer lies in this device that you can see on your screens. This device which is known as the HCSR04 or ultrasonic sensor detect is, detects the distance of the object from, the per, from itself. So ultrasonic sensing is one of the best ways to sense proximity and detect distance with high reliability. An ultrasonic sensor is an instrument that measures the distance to an object using ultrasound waves as it can be seen from the picture. So ultrasonic sensors work by sending out a wave at a frequency above the human audible range. The transducer, transducer of the sensor acts as a microphone to receive and send the ultrasonic sound. The sensor determines the distance to a target by measuring time lapses between the sending and receiving of the ultrasonic pulse. So this is how we get the distance to an object. So we will be using this principle to detect a distance. So when the user's hand comes real close to the hand wash or the hand wash, so when he presses the hand wash at that time this, this distance change will be detected by the Arduino board and the LEDs will start going off so that the person is notified when he needs to stop washing his rubbing his hands with soap and wash his hands. So these are the parts list that will be using that will be using for this project. So we'll require four of the blue LEDs, one blue LED, of one green LED and one red LED. We'll also require a buzzer to uh, that will alert us that 20 seconds have been passed so it will make a sound after 20 seconds and you will also need 6 of the 220 ohm resistors and we will also need the, of course we will need the ultrasonic sensor HCSR04 and 9 volt battery connector to connect the battery to connect to give the power source to Arduino and of course we will need the Arduino boards. So this is the wiring diagram. You can take a screenshot of this or there is a link in the description below for this as well as the code. So you can download it from there and we will use this diagram as an aid to wire all the components today. So we will do exactly what is shown in the diagram below. 
So without further ado, enough of this theory, let's get started. So for the wiring we have we have an HC SR04 ultrasonic sensor over here which has four pins VCC, trigger, echo and ground. We have connected jumper cables already to it and I have already put the LEDs on the breadboard along with the resistors. So the negative terminal of the LED is connected to one end of the resistor and the other end of the resistor is connected to the ground. So that's how we have connected the LEDs. We have not yet connected the positive terminals of the LEDs. We'll do that right now. But let us get started with wiring the ultrasonic sensor first. So as you can see from the diagram on your screens, the VCC pin goes into the 5 volt on the Arduino. Then the trigger and echo pins go on to the D12 and D11 pins respectively and there we go with D12 and for the ground we'll just connect it to the breadboard for now and then we can connect it to the we can add a ground there afterwards so we are done with the wiring for the ultrasonic sensor so now what we need to do is let's connect the LEDs to the Arduino board so we have some jumper cables with us so we'll connect the positive terminals of all the LEDs to the uh, pins in the Arduino board so according to the diagram the pins that are associated with the LEDs are from D7 to D2 so D2 is the green pin and D7 is the red pin so we'll start with D7 and we'll put it there D7 okay then we have the D6 which is our first blue LED and then we'll connect it to the Arduino digital pin 6 next we have second blue LED which will be connected to D5 wire them accordingly and we'll continue the same with the third blue LED which is which will be connected to D4 Similarly, the last blue LED will be connected to D3 on the Arduino board. And finally, the last or the green LED will be connected to the D2 pin on Arduino board. So, we've completed the wiring for the LEDs as now. So we've, we're almost done. Now we have over here with us and this is a buzzer. So as you can see it has two legs and one leg is smaller than the other leg. So the smaller leg is the negative terminal and the taller length leg is the positive terminal. So we'll go ahead and add this buzzer to our breadboard. So we'll add it over here and uh, just keep it in center. Yeah. So the positive side of the positive terminal of the buzzer will connect it to D10 pin on the Arduino board. So it's kind of hard to look at where the pin goes on the buzzer. So make sure you put wire it in the proper pins and might as well just add the other pin as well over here okay so this is the positive terminal and it is it will go into the pin number d10 on the arduino board so just right next to the two pins that we connected for the ultrasonic sensor 
and as for the negative end of the buzzer we will just connect it to the ground so here we have a pin for ground we will just connect it over here okay once we are done with that we will add ground and VCC from the Arduino board so we will take up a wire and we will add the ground okay so here is the ground pin we will connect it here and then we will add it over here we need an other ground so we will take the other ground from here we will put it in the other ground pin that is right next to D13 and we will wire it along with the LEDs so over here so that's pretty much it we're, we're done with the wiring you see how easy it was to add all I mean wire all this so let's start with the coding now all right then so now that we have completely wired up everything and we have everything set up and ready let's write the code for the hand wash timer so go ahead and open up your Arduino IDs on your computer and go to new and create a new sketch this way and then save it save as you save as to create a sketch with the name of your choice so I've done already done that and I've named it hand wash timer so these two methods you will get automatically whenever you create a new sketch so what happens in setup is this is the method that will run only once whenever I mean it will run only initially when the Arduino is run and it won't run anymore so this is basically used to initialize any variables or set up pin modes etc and the main code will come inside the loop so this part of the code will keep on repeating itself so that's why it's called the loop method so let's start by giving pin modes in our setup method so we'll create a for loop so in this for loop we'll initialize our the led pins that we are going to use so we'll say int i equals to 2 semicolon i is less than or equal to 7 semicolon and then i plus plus so it will iterate all the way from 2 to 7 to 2 3 4 5 6 7 and as you might remember uh, when we were wiring up our Arduino we had connected all the LEDs to digital pin 7 to 2 so that way we are initializing them over here so we will just say pin mode pin mode and it takes two our pair arguments so the first one is the pin number so in our case we will just pass it an i so the first time it iterates over the loop it will be 2 and then 3 4 5 6 and so on so and we want to make this pin as an output pin so we will type in output and output should be in all caps and now we have done it so let's let's also start the do the pin modes for the other pins that we have used so what we have used is the trigger pin the echo pin and the buzzer so but we first need to initialize these pins so what we'll do is before the setup method we'll go there and we'll type int echo pin echo pin equals 11 and this pin should match the pin numbers that you have uh, given in your Arduinos like whenever you have wired the echo pins you have to give that number so in our case we wired it to digital pin 11 so that's why we have given it 11 same similarly we'll do the same thing for the trigger pin so we'll name it trig pin equals 12 and we we'll just give it we will create a duration and it will be of the type long and we won't initialize it yet and we will also create 
a variable called distance that we will be using later on in the code. And we will also go ahead and define buzzer over here, define, we will name it buzzer and it has a pin of pin number 10. So, once we are done with that, we will go back to our setup method where we were typing in the code before and we will continue there. So, we will continue with the pin modes. Now that we have defined our echo pin, trig pin and buzzer, we will give them the pin modes of output. So, we will say pin mode, so pin mode. And the first one we'll give, uh, we'll take trig pin and we'll give it output. Oh, it should be all capital, output, okay. And we'll do the same thing for echo pin. And we'll also give it so the but see the output was given to trig pin, but echo pin it has to be input. So take care with that. It's supposed to be input. And the third one is the pin mode, and this will be for the buzzer. And the buzzer will be outputting, so we should give it output and do not forget the semicolons. So, we are done with our setup method. Now, let us head on to our loop method which we want to be run over and over again. So, in this method we will write the code for getting the distance from using the ultrasonic sensor and then turning off the lights once we get the distance and then each light gets switched on after every 4 seconds and once 20 seconds are completed the green LED turns on and an alarm, an, an alarm sounds. So, and we want to do that again and again whenever we detect a change in distance. So, let us start. So, we will say digital right and we want to set the trigger pin to low first and then high again and then low, low again. So, this is the basic things that are done whenever we are using an ultrasonic sensor and trig pin low uh, semicolon and then we will just delay it for 2 microseconds microseconds and then we will just copy these two lines so ok yes copy and then we will paste them so now over here we do not want them to be low, we want them to be high and we will just increase the delay from 2 seconds to 2 microseconds to 10 microseconds and again we will write low. So, this way we are trying to initialize our ultrasonic sensor. So, we do not need the delay over here anymore or we can just remove this. So, over here now we need to get the duration of the pulse that was sent because as I said in the introduction the distance is calculated by getting the time lapse between the, the pulse sent and the pulse received. So, here we are going to get that. So, we will say duration equals because we created a long type variable on the top. So, we will just use that duration equals. So, we have a Oh, okay, so it is pulse in and then brackets and we want to get it in from the echo pin, echo pin and we will set that to high. So, this way we will get the duration, duration of the pulse. Now, in order to calculate the distance, we have to write a formula. So, we will say distance equals duration times 0 0.0t. 
three four three this is so that we convert the distance into centimeters and then we'll just divide it by two semicolon and now we'll check if the distance that we have the value for the distance that we have gotten is within 30 centimeters. So, what we are going to do is we will check if let us say if we place our hand wash timer right behind or right in front of the right next even right next to the hand wash. So, whenever a user or a hand comes in the range of 30 centimeter to the hand wash timer it will start timing so that it will know that someone is going to wash hands. So, it will start the timer. So, we will say if we will check the distance over here. So, if the distance is greater than 0 and the distance is less than or equal to 30 centimeters, then what should we do? We should call a new function. So, we will just name it timer and we will create the function right now, do not worry about it timer and yep that is it. So, now we will create a method called timer. So, we will head out of this curly braces outside we will go outside the curly brace and we will create a new method called timer. So, we will name it void timer and open and close curly braces. So, what essentially this timer method will do is so, we are checking that if the distance if the user is in within the 30 centimeter range what should we do? We should light up LEDs one after the other and with 4 seconds interval. So, the red LED will light up first and after 4 seconds the second blue LED after 4 seconds this will keep on going until the green LED lights on indicating the passage of 20 seconds and at the end of the 20 seconds the green light will green LED would turn up as well as there will be an alarm. So, we will type that code in this method over here. So, we will say digital digital write and we will turn the red LED on. So, as you remember we connected the red LED to digital pin 7. So, we will say 7 and we will turn it on. So, we will say hi semicolon and we will delay for add a delay for 4000. So, this basically means delay it for 4 seconds. So, once the red LED is on after 4 seconds the blue LEDs should light up. So, we will type in that code uh, using a for loop. So, we will create a for loop saying for int i equals to 6 i is less than or oh, it's not sorry i is greater than or equal to 2 semicolon i minus minus so we'll start from the 6 so we'll start from digital pin 6 and keep on turning the leds on until we reach digital pin 2 and each of the pin will be turned on only after 4 seconds so we'll write that code over here. So, first we will say digital digital write i and we will turn it on high. And now what happens if we reach the uh, digital pin 2 or green LED? So, we need to write some code for that because when it reaches the green LED we want an alarm to sound. So, we will say if we create an if statement if int i or oh not sorry not int i if i equal equals 2. So, if i equal equals 2 this i is value of i is coming from here. So, this will be true when the green LED lights up. So, if i is equal to 2 then digital write 7 low. So, what essentially this does is as soon as the 20 seconds are over the green LED lights up and we, we just want to turn off the red LED. 
and then we'll create inside over here we'll create a for loop and within the for loop we'll write the code for sounding of the alarm now we can just go ahead and type in the digital write buzzer high and then digital write buzzer digital write buzzer low and then digital write buzzer high with delays and it will create a simple beep but what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to create a kind of a you know musical tone so i'm just writing the code for that if you don't want to do that you can just ignore this part uh, or for you those who are interested you can follow on so we'll just type in this code i equals 0 i is less than equals to 2 so we want this sound to ring for 3 times and then i plus plus and open and close curly braces so we'll say digital right digital right and we'll turn on the buzzer so we'll say buzzer and high Oops. okay here and once the buzzer is on we'll delay for a uh, hundred milliseconds hundred milliseconds and once we are done with that we'll uh, we'll turn turn off the buzzer so we'll say digital digital right buzzer so I might as well just copy this line because I'm going to be using it over and over again. So just copy this line and once we turn on the buzzer we wait for 100 milliseconds then we turn it down then we wait for another 250 milliseconds and what we do is we'll turn it on again so we'll just paste the code here so we'll say digital right buzzer high instead of low we'll change it to high so we'll turn it on again and then we'll again add a delay of around 100 seconds and we'll turn it off again so this is one part of the tone and after that we'll just delay for 500 seconds you know some of this some part of this code or the one I'm writing now might not make some sense to you but when I actually run the uh, and I mean add uh, upload this code to Arduino and run it you'll get what I'm doing here so for the time being just uh, follow me so once we have delayed it for 500 milliseconds we'll again type in we'll turn it on again and this time we'll turn it on for 100 milliseconds so we'll delay for 100 milliseconds and again we'll turn it off and now we'll delay for 125 seconds 125 milliseconds and now we'll just copy this code and paste it again so yeah we'll go there paste it again because we want it to run again but in, we, we won't we don't want this line to run again so we'll just remove this line from there so and the tone that we are trying to make is like beep 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 so this is the kind of tone that we are trying to make with this code so the last part of the code it comes something like this so we'll say digital right and okay I might just copy paste that line we oh no so I'll just copy this line and then paste it right there so digital right we'll switch on the buzzer again hi we'll add a delay so again we'll add a delay for 100 seconds 100 milliseconds then we'll again switch it off and this time we'll add a delay for 750 milliseconds and once we are done with that we'll just say for and 
this and so int i equals 7 i is less than i is greater than or equal to 2 i plus plus oh sorry i minus minus oh my bad this all should be in the parentheses okay so we'll say digital write i and so so what we are doing over here is in this loop is once we have sounded the alarm for one time i mean beep 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 this happens after that we want to turn off all the lights so we don't want the leds to keep keep on for the entire duration we want to shut them down once the alarm has sounded so this code will do just that and once we are done with that we'll go outside this this and this so we'll go outside the if statement and just before the for loop ends over here after the third bracket we'll add a delay of 400 seconds of uh, 4 seconds okay so that this loop so before ending this loop will add delay for 4000 so that this code runs after every 4 seconds because as you remember we to, we were switching on the lights one by one in this for loop so we want the lights to leds to turn on only after 4 seconds so as there are fa, uh, four blue leds and one red led so these will make it 4 into 5 20 seconds or oh, total of 20 seconds so let's verify this code click on verify and okay we've got an error over here okay this is for the loop and this is for this all right so the error is because we missed a semicolon over here so let's go ahead and verify the code again okay we've missed another semicolon somewhere there so yep we missed a semicolon there as well again let's try and verify again okay so i hope we don't get any errors this time yes and the program has been verified successfully so now it's time for us to plug in our arduino and upload the code to it all right so let's plug in our arduino with the computer okay so once our arduino is plugged in make sure you go to the tools tab and select the board as arduino uno and the port so make sure you select the port whichever your arduino is connected to and then click on upload okay this was unnecessary okay let's try again okay and it shows that it has been load the code has been uploaded successfully and it shows that it says done uploading and as you can see on the arduino arduino lights up and the light which says l it has been switched on me showing that the l the code is it is loaded with the code so let's try the code now so if we if we wave our hand on top of the ultrasonic sensor as you can see the red light lights on first and then after four seconds the blue led and this will keep on until we reach 20 seconds So, so now you've got to understand why the entire long code at the end was. So this was for this kind of like a musical tone to be heard when at the end of 20 seconds. And now this is working perfectly. So now what we'll do next is we'll add it to a casing and make it look beautiful. So you can make, a, make the casing out of anything that you have. So you can create it out of plastic or you can 3D print it or you can make it out of a cardboard. That's totally up to you. So this is what our final version of the product hand wash timer looks like. 
so I've also connected the 9 volt connector along with the batteries to the Arduino board so that I've just keep it kept it outside so that you can see it uh, so now we don't require once we have loaded the code uploaded the code to the Arduino we don't need the laptop anymore if we use the 9 volt batteries and the 9 volt connector so let's I'll just show you a demo of how this works so as I go close to my hand wash you can see the red light coming in and then the blue light comes after four seconds and then the second and the third will come on so during this time we have to keep rubbing our hands with soap and once once the green light and the alarm are sounded that's the only time when we are supposed to wash our hands so i hope you liked it i hope it will be very hope helpful to you during these times and stay home stay safe and please don't forget to like subscribe and share our videos and also subscribe our channel if you want to learn more about interesting stuff like this until next time, peace.